Section 91, example 3. People in California feel that they're being charged a higher price for gas than people living in other parts of the country. In August 2009, a study showed that the average price per gallon in the U.S. was $3.09 and 7 and 7 tenths, so 3.097. I noticed the word average, so we're in mean land, no proportions. Um, so a local newspaper wants to perform a hypothesis test to determine if the average price in California is higher than the national average and assume sigma is 0 0.024806. So that sounds like a hypothesis to me. Sh to determine if the average price in California is higher than the national average. So higher than the national average, and it's a, we have the word average, so mu is higher or greater than the national average, which is 3.097, and that'll be H1, what we want to prove. And then the way stats works is our H0 is always equal to that number. So we're basically going to disprove that it equals $3.09 to prove that it's actually higher. So we'll do some examples similar to last time, but we're going to come up with the value on our own. So we're going to provide a value for the sample mean, which means we need a value for x bar, that would provide some evidence for H1, but probably not enough to lead to a rejection. Basically, this means the sample is a little bit different due to random variation. So maybe gas prices are the same. So something that's higher than $3.09, but only by a little bit. So that might be like $3.10 or $3.11, right? These are small differences and could just be random. Just because one sample is $3.10, right, that's not significantly more than $3.09. And if you wanted to confirm, you could use the z-score to confirm. So same thing as last video, but we have to come up with the value on our own. And if you confirm and the z-score doesn't work, then pick a different value. So let's go with $3.10. We'll take away the average of 3097 and divide by the standard deviation of 0 0.024806. And then go ahead and calculate that, or you can watch me. So subtract and then divide. And I got a small z-score of 0 0.121, which is less than two standard deviations. So yeah, it's weak evidence. And that's because it's not significantly bigger. Versus strong evidence, right, we're going to have really expensive gas, like $4, $5, uh, maybe even $3.50 is enough, but significantly larger than that 309. So we're going to provide a value, again, for the sample mean, x bar, that would most likely lead to rejection. That means strong evidence. So the sample is very different, so California is probably more expensive. So I think 350 is enough. Um, maybe you're more convinced at four dollars, right? Five dollars. We don't need to go that big though. So let's check out 350. So Z is 350 minus 3.097 over 0 0.024806. And if you're really not sure, you can just use your calculator to guess and check. So we'll subtract and divide by the standard deviation. And yeah, it's way it's a z-score of 16 so it's definitely significantly larger 16.246 wait way more than two standard deviations so it's definitely strong evidence so maybe we didn't have to go this far maybe even three dollars and 20 cents was far enough so we'll do 320 minus 310 or sorry 320 minus 3.096097 divided by 024806 yeah, and even $3.20 was far enough away because we have a z-score of four. So figuring out how far is tricky and we'll get better at that, but just something far away would be strong evidence. And then we were trying to prove mu is greater than 3.097. So is this left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed? So if we have a normal curve and we have greater than, we shade the right side, so it's right-tailed. Let's try example four. So according to the Kaiser Family Foundation, 
84% of U.S. children ages 8 to 18 had internet access at home. So researchers wondered if this percentage has changed since then. And we know sigma is 0 0.016395. So I don't see the word average anywhere. Um, I noticed the word percent. I noticed 84 is a percent. So this makes me think we're in proportion land. Um, our variable is internet or not. So again, that's categorical, which makes it a proportion. Right, whenever we have those two choices, we're doing proportions instead. So my hypothesis, H0 and H1 will involve P. And then it looks like I'm trying to prove that the percentage has changed. So what math notation would represent change? So change could be in either direction. So this is where we have a not equal. So we just want to prove it's not equal to 0.84. That's how we would prove it's changed. And we'll always change those proportions to decimal form. So 0.84 instead of 84%. And so then my null is just equals 0.84. And we'll do the same thing as last example. So now we want to provide a sample proportion. So we want to find a p hat that, again, provides some evidence, but not enough to convince us that it's changed. So, but probably not enough to lead to a rejection. So the sample is a little bit different due to random variation, so maybe it hasn't changed. So this is weak evidence. So something close to 84. So I might choose 85 or even 83. Since we're proving not equal, we can go in either direction. Your choice, um, but let's check with the z-score. So let's say we went with 0.85, right? There's lots of possible answers. We'll take away the 0.84, the average proportion, and then we'll divide by the standard deviation, 0 0.016395. Go ahead and calculate that. And we want to get a z-score less than 2 for weak evidence. So if you don't get less than 2, pick another number. Yeah, and we get 0 0.609. So it's less than 2 standard deviation, so it's weak. All right, and let's do the same thing, but strong. So we want to provide, again, a sample proportion. So that's p hat. That would most likely lead to the rejection. So that means the sample is very different. I'm convinced the percent changed. So maybe like 90% would convince me, 70% uh, maybe the other direction, right? Something a little bit farther from 84. Again, it's a little bit of a guess and check. These aren't the only solutions, um, but let's check the z-score for 90. So we'll do 0.90 minus the 84 all over the standard deviation, 0.016395. And again, if it's not more than two standard deviations, then just pick another number. So 0.90 minus 0.84. To me, 90 feels very different than 84, but let's check. So we'll divide by 0.016395, and we get a z-score of, yeah, 3.660, because 59 will go up to 60. And it's way more than two standard deviations, so we would call this strong evidence. It's probably not random anymore, it probably is different. So basically we're trying to prove is something just random or is something very different. And again, we'll go to left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed. So we were trying to prove that P was not equal to 0.84. So this is called two-tailed, which means when we draw the normal curve, we're gonna look at the tails on both sides. So we'll check that out when we get into the later sections, but it's just preparing us for doing hypothesis tests.